So here are a couple of thoughts for us to ponder today and here on. On Ash Wednesday, a day like this, when we gather to worship, Ash Wednesday calls us, woos us, to do some checks and balance in life. Um, Ash Wednesday is a way, worship is a way to remind us that this life we live, this life we love, is not permanent. Buddhist thinkers will say impermanence. We are not here forever. I don't know who wants to live here forever. I'm not, I'm not sure. You know? Later, you will hear some words like this. You are dust. And to dust you shall return. Sit on it. Dwell in it. This life that we have is not here forever. Genesis reminds us we are created with the dust of the earth. We are indeed a lump of clay. And someday we will become dirt again. When we were little, some of our older kids in school, they say, smell it. It smells dirt. It's true. I can see you going home and trying it. <laughs> yeah, it smells dirt. That's who we are. Yes. We are dust, and to dust we shall all return. And therefore, I think Ash Wednesday is trying to tell us, don't be too comfortable. Don't be too comfortable as if you're going to be here forever. Live with a sense that this might be the last day of my life. Think about it. Sometimes when we live our lives the way we do, we do not pause to think, reflect about this very life. As if tomorrow will automatically come. But there is no guarantee. There is no guarantee. You know, last year, 2020, we have lost so many friends, literally. I have yet to do about five or six memorial services in Covina because I couldn't do it. And some of them are waiting for a brighter day when COVID-19 is behind us, so that I can come back and do a memorial service for them. Who would have thought that these beautiful people who sat in my Bible study every week, who came to worship every Sunday, would one day 
not be there. You know? None of us are promised tomorrow. So Ask Wednesday is, is trying to help us calibrate. What do you want to do? When I first got my GPS system, it's one of those we bought in Best Buy, you know, Garmin. You know, and and when you t when you took a wrong exit, <laughs> you know what it says? I am calibrating. Yeah, I am recalibrating your next move. <laughs> I think Ash Wednesday is something like that. We need to recalibrate. What are we going to do next? Does it make sense? It's a recalibrating time. My late father struggled with kidney disease towards the end of his life, which I didn't know. And uh, he was moved from his house to my sisters and my three sisters took turn to care for him. So one day he wakes up and he says today I want to have a haircut. Okay, my sisters Took him to the barber, had the haircut. As they were getting out of the barber shop, he said, I want a pinstripe shirt. Okay, they went and got the pinstripe shirt. They came home, and he said, I want to take a bath. They gave him a bath. He put on his shirt. He always wanted to put a tie, and in the late afternoon, his old buddy came from far away, literally far away. He came to visit my dad. They had beautiful, wholesome visits. His friend left. My father dropped. He died on my sister's lap. It just seems like, we're looking back, he just knew. But nobody around him knew. Sometime I wish if each of us just knew our timetable. We will all be wonderful people. You will say, I have one more week. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to call all my friends that I have done wrong. Or I'm going to do some reconciliation work. I want, I want to go and apologize to people so that when I, when the clock strike, I'm in the right place at the right time, ready to close my eyes and move on. Wouldn't that be nice? But we do not have that luxury. And therefore, Ash Wednesday becomes important reminder. We are all dust. Into dust we shall return. That means 
Humble yourself before the Lord. Take each day as a gift. And be a gift to one another. That's what it is. So, as a part of that acknowledgement, I want to invite you and uh, receive uh, this ashes. This ashes are from palms that I had accumulated the last couple of years. It has moved with me a couple of times. They're from a couple of churches. I burned in my grill. It's a homemade. It has some olive oil. I hope you are not allergic to olive oil. And uh, if you are, then I have unadulterated plain <laughs> dust. So any, anybody allergic to olive oil? No? Okay, because if, if you are, then I want to put the cross on you first before I do the others. If it works, I have a toothpick here. I'll just put a cross on you like this. Is that okay? If this doesn't work, I can use my finger and here's a sanitizer. I am prepared. <laughs> this is just trying to be safe for all of us. And I want to be responsible for what I do here so that you are not afraid to receive what you came for. Does it make sense? Yeah. And so I want, to, I want to pray and then I want to invite you and I don't care whether you come pew by pew or however the Spirit of the Lord moves, I will be here until the last one. Is that good enough? Yes. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for reminding all of us today that we are just lump of clay, that you shaped us and reshaped us and breathed into all of us a breath of life. In each of us dwell your spirit. In breathing your breath unto us, you have given us yourself to us. We are grateful for the gift of breath. It reminds us every single day, every single second that we are yours. Our life is your gift. And one day, this body of ours will return to its original state, clay. But the life that you have given, Scripture reminds us, it will take a different form. And our life will dwell with you. 
Lord, you have a purpose for each of us. To know you and to enjoy you forever. To know you and to glorify you. So teach us to walk with you. Help us to care for one another on this journey. As a reminder, even as, even as we take this ashes on our forehead today, remind us, O oh God, we live because of you. And may our lives glorify you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.